Okay, I'm just trying to record for people that who will get off uh, uh, in the middle there, or some people who have not joined us. So basically what I'm saying is that um, uh, if we want to look at depreciation, depreciation came as one of the topics that uh, you indicated you needed support on. And uh, depreciation is also one of those topics that have proved to be very common, especially in the CPA paper one paper. Uh, so basically, when we speak about depreciation, when I say depreciation, I'm not only meaning uh, uh, depreciation, but uh, there are also other elements. I'll give the word depreciation there. But in here, you also need to know about the dispose of assets. The dispose of assets, and of course, also accounting. Oh, yes, PPE, uh, property, plant, and equipment. So, and then also, there's also another aspect here that comes in, the aspect of accumulated depreciation. So we are going to see how all these interplay. Now, in most cases, they will bring you, of course, a question that is trying to test most of these. And uh, basically, uh, the whole principle. This whole principle comes from IS 16 that you will interface when you get to uh, level two uh, while doing the paper eight, financial reporting paper. So, for basically our today's conversation, Now, um, depreciation can also be called uh, wear and tear. Uh, this is from uh, the aspect of the taxman language, wear and tear. And one of the things you also need to know that as depreciation is for fixed assets, we have another term called amortization. Okay, amortization is for the nanny uh, tangible assets, like for example, trademarks, goodwill, among others. So depreciation is for the tangible nanny current assets. So it's good for you to understand that. Now we have different methods of computing depreciation, just as I indicated earlier on in, the, uh, in one of our past most classes. But uh, for purposes of this exam, uh, you, you're required to uh, be well acquainted with how to compute depreciation on straight line, as well as depreciation on reducing balance. We have others like some of these methods. Uh, uh, there are several of them, but uh, let's just Restrict our today's class uh, for this. You can get ideas on how the others also play, but uh, for today's class, we we'll let's restrict ourselves on these two because these have uh, become very common. Uh, uh, all of you to mute. Uh, in case you have any questions, please use the chat box so that we don't distract the class. So thank you. So we have nanny carried assets. Of course, you need to know that nanny carried assets, these are assets that will stay in the organization for periods exceeding 12 months. Those are the nanny carried assets. And these are the, the these are the assets that qualify to be depreciated. Now, you need to know that if we purchase an asset, if we purchase an asset, definitely the double entry will be we will debit 
our asset maybe it could can be motor vehicle it can be building it can be uh whatever you can think about and then we credit this could also be furniture and then we credit the mode of payment this mode of payment can be uh of course can be cash or can be bank uh we can also have of course accounts payable accounts pay by said accounts payable is the same thing as credit cards so these two terms are used interchangeably so you can buy on credit but also you can actually buy uh uh, uh you can buy by an exchange of another asset for example you can buy uh, a laptop and then you interchange with that laptop and they give you another laptop and then you just pay a top up you get it eh? so in that case of course you can have another asset in exchange that you you, you can credit asset in exchange maybe you can uh, if you need to uh, buy uh benz you can give in your yeah your toyota and then they give you a benz at the end of the day you have to credit your uh benz your Toyota because it will no longer be in your books and then you recognize your new bands. So it's good for you to appreciate how assets come into existence. Now, not only happening at the purchase of assets, but also it's good for us to appreciate that these assets can also uh, be improved in terms of capacity. I already talk, gave you an example one time of of a building like this, where I am. And I said, if it was just for me painting uh, this building, then I would regard that as a revenue expenditure. But if at all, I'm uh, maybe increasing on the size of this building, maybe by adding an extra room, that would mean that uh, I'll stick, that would mean that that would be a capital expenditure, would, would, which would prompt me to debit still my assets or maybe building in that case and then maybe credit uh, the mode of payment that i've used to add on the capacity to that asset so it's very important for us to understand that now once these assets come into into uh, place we go ahead to uh depreciate them say uh of course in periodically and this periodically can be uh, depending on how organizations draw their financials this periodically can be monthly it can be of course by annually but also can be annually depending so with our most common types of depreciation uh the reducing balance, reducing balance, and straight line, and straight line, you come to realize that these play in different ways. Now, for straight line, we assume that depreciation is the same throughout the useful life of the asset. So it is straight line. It means the depreciation in year one, if this, if this asset is a five-year asset, the depreciation in year one will not divert from the depreciation in year five. If it was 200,000 in year one, it will still be 200,000 in year two. That's why it's called straight line because it is the same across. Now, if they say depreciation is at reducing balance, it means that uh, depreciation is subject to uh, the net book value rather than the, the cost. Now, before I get there, the aspect of depreciation, we're looking at depreciation, they can a question can come where they give you depreciation 
it gives you depreciation as a percentage. So they can say asset A cost maybe 50 million. And then they'll say it's depreciated at 20% straight line. Now, in that case, ours is just use this 20% and multiply by the 50 million and get the depreciation for this asset. Alternatively, away from that, they can give you information relating to this asset. Now, the standard, uh, they can give you information, for example, they can give you cost till uh, at the 50 million. They can also give you uh, useful life. They can give you useful life, maybe five years. They can also give you the scrap value. The scrap value. Maybe they can say maybe the scrap value maybe is 10 million. Yes, scrap value or they can bring it in a statement where they say that such an asset at the end of its useful life it will be sold at this value. Then you know that that is its scrap value. Now, once they give you such information, it means that you're not just now just going to add the percentage, but you're rather going to calculate. Now, in this case, your depreciation will equal to cost minus the scrap value divided by the useful life. I usually want, want you to, if you, uh, you're following the class, to at least get a notebook so you, you, you're able to note some of these things. If there's something that you want to note, you can easily note it as I speak. So if your depreciation is equal to this, you then just distribute uh, your values. You put your 50 million, less your 10 million, divided by the useful life, which is five years. So there you get your 40 million divided by five gives you a figure there. You get it, huh? So it's uh, very important that you understand. Now that is with straight line. Now, if it is reducing balance and they have given us a percentage, they can give you, uh, for example, they can give you an asset, asset B, and this asset can be, let's say, at 20 million. And then they can give you uh, the reducing balance, the reducing balance percentage. This reducing balance percentage can be, let's say, maybe still 20%. But then they can also go ahead to give you what we call accumulated depreciation, which can be, uh, let's say, maybe accumulated depreciation of, let's say, yeah, it could be maybe of 2 million. So when somebody says accumulated depreciation, this means that this is the depreciation for this asset for the previous period. You get it. So that is very important. So the depreciation added up for the previous period is called accumulated depreciation. I also say that accumulated depreciation can also be called provision or depreciation. And the reason why we, we usually hold this account in business is because this asset at, at a point T after it is useful life will actually wear down and we need to replace for it. So the reason why we, we keep an accumulated depreciation account or provision for depreciation is because this is like a reserve 
that we shall use to pay to buy a new asset in case this asset has actually uh, uh, has gone to scrap. So it's very important for you to understand the ideology of why we keep an accumulated depreciation. So as we charge the depreciation in the P and L of our profits, we have to keep this value of our assets in the balance sheet. So this account keeps on uh, adding up throughout the useful life of the asset. Of course, at the end of the, uh, the asset life cycle, if this asset if you maybe uh, scrap value zero, at the end of the period, the accumulated depreciation will add up to the value of the asset. So the asset would have depreciated fully. So what is stated in the accumulated depreciation account will ideally be the same value that uh, was for the asset. So very important. So if we had calculate our depreciation using the reducing balance here, we'll do the 20% times our net book value, which will be 20 million less the 2 million. So this is where the difference comes in. For straight line, we subject the percentage on the cost directly. For reducing balance, we subject the percentage only on the net book value. This net book value can also be called the carrying amount. It's very good for you to understand that, that the net book value can also be called the carrying amount. And this, oh, somebody says I can't hear anything. Uh, Zamba, uh, can you hear now? Apologies. Can you hear now? Could you just uh, type in the chat box if you can hear now? If I can proceed. Can you hear? Use the chat book. Type in the chat box if you can hear. Don't, don't unmute. Okay, I'm okay. Very good uh, that you're very fine. So we are saying that the reducing balance is on the net book value, which is also called the carrying amount. You get it. So that's where the difference is. The straight line bases on cost. Well, the reducing balance for it bases on the net book value, which is also called the carrying amount. So that is what I wanted to emphasize on that. So when depreciation is on a monthly basis, what we basically do is we get the annual depreciation and divide it by 12 to get the monthly depreciation. So we get the annual depreciation and divide it by 12 to get the monthly. But it's also very common that the examiner sometimes will bring in what we call a time apportionment. The time apportionment. Uh, now, such scenarios come in where an asset maybe is bought media. It could be media or maybe after maybe four months, whatever it is. So, if 
they tell you that uh, uh, depreciation is based on time apportionment, then you should, every time they say maybe they bought an asset, for example, they can say maybe you bought a motor vehicle, maybe at, uh, we still use 50 million in March, in March 2021. Then they can say maybe uh, the depreciation, they can go ahead and give you the depreciation. Depreciation is at 20% straight line. You get it. And then uh, they can ask you, of course, they can tell you, uh, maybe the company uses time apportionment in depreciating its assets. In depreciating its assets. Now, in this case, where there's an aspect of time apportionment, maybe they can ask you, determine the depreciation Determine the depreciation for period ending December 2021. Now, since this asset was bought in March, not January, and they're asking us for depreciation, we shall get what would have been the depreciation for this asset. which is 20% on cost since it's straight line, and multiply it by the number of months that this asset remained in the organization. So we bought it in March. And if we bought it in March, uh, maybe uh, uh, this was, it was bought on 1st March. If this asset was bought on 1st March, so we shall count the months that it stayed to the period ending December 2021. So from March to December 2021, those are like 10 months. You get it. If you bought it on 1st March, if this asset had been bought on 31st March, then we would consider, of course, uh, from April, because 31st March and 1st April is ideally the same period. One, one is just a day before the other. So since it was bought on 1st March, we shall consider 10 out of 12. So that is how we apply the aspect of time apportionment. But also, sometimes the examiner may give uh, a general rule, and this is very common. And they say, if this company was called ABC, they can say that ABC recognizes full year's depreciation, ABC Limited recognizes full year's depreciation in the year of purchase, in the year of purchase, in the year of purchase, and none in the year of disposal. You get it, huh? So if they are saying that ABC recognizes full year's depreciation in the year of purchase and none in the year of disposal, it doesn't matter which month we bought the asset. So even if we bought this asset at this at, at around March or April or May we will have to consider the full year's depreciation. So we shall not bring in the time apportionment if we have that rule in the question. And this is very common. We shall see how this plays. So you need to take keen interest to see what the examiner does. And of course, this also cuts across also in the practical world you, you basically usually find that uh, depreciation, uh, different companies can have different policies. 
One organization can say that we charge full years depreciation in the year of purchase and none in the year of disposal. So it means that in the year of disposal, when you're disposing of the asset, you basically don't have to charge depreciation. Another one can say for us, we use time apportionment. When they say time apportionment, even if you sell this asset, let's say uh, around April, before the end of the year, you will still calculate the, it, the depreciation up to April before the year closes. So it's uh, very important for you to understand that. Now, that is how the time apportionment issue would come in. Now, similar to this uh, specific topic is the idea of disposal. Disposal of assets. Now, when we are disposing of assets, when we are disposing of assets, the first step we should do is to credit our asset account. We shall credit our asset account. This could be motor vehicle, whatever it is. And we debit the disposal account. Debit the disposal account and credit the asset account. Now, once you have done this, it means that you have removed the asset from the asset account. Now, when you're removing the asset, you're crediting your asset account, you credit with the cost. So this transaction is at cost. You're removing from the disposal, uh, you're removing from the asset account to the disposal account. You remove at cost. Now, once you remove this asset from the disposal account, from the asset account to the disposal account, now you go ahead. This you can call it this the recognizing asset. The recognizing asset. Now, the next one is you de recognize accumulated depreciation. You de recognize accumulated depreciation. Now, this asset has been in the organization for some time. So it has had respective depreciation for the previous periods. So you suppose, since you you're selling off this asset, you're also mandated to actually write off the depreciation, the actual depreciation for that specific asset. So what we shall do in the same way now, as assets have a normal debit balance, accumulated depreciation has a normal credit balance. So if we are recognizing accumulated depreciation, we shall debit our accumulated depreciation account, and then we shall credit our disposal account. I hope you're following. Debit accumulated depreciation and you credit the disposal account. Okay. Now, once you have done this, it means that the asset account no longer has any value to do with this asset. Accumulated depreciation has also uh, been written off to the disposal account. Now you go on to recognize the sale.
we cognize the cell. And how you recognize the cell is since if this cell is through cash or bank, which is in most cases, we shall debit, of course, let's say we are debiting our bank or cash. And then we shall credit our, we shall credit our disposal account. So you debit bank or cash and then credit your disposal account. So you see, at the point in time when we are recognizing the sale of the asset or the disposal, we are no longer affecting our asset account, but rather we are affecting our disposal account. You get it? It's very important for you to understand that. Now, debiting bank or cash and then crediting the disposal account. Now, once you have done this, this is what happens. You want to find out if there is either a profit or loss on disposal. A profit or loss on disposal. So basically what we do to find out either we have a profit or, or loss on disposal, I'll remove this. I'm going to draw for you how this account looks like, the disposal account. It's from the disposal account that we go ahead to reconcile the disposal account to find out whether we have a profit or loss on disposal. Now, if we have our disposal account here, remember, if this was the motor vehicle that we are selling off, remember, we, we did the first step of debiting disposal account and crediting the assets. So there is something called motor vehicle here that came from the asset account. We went on to re re recognize accumulated depreciation. So there is an accumulated depreciation value right there. Are we together? So once you have done that, you now proceed uh, to recognizing the sale. Now this sale, we are saying that we debit our bank or cash because money is definitely coming in. And then we credit our disposal account. Now, when you debit your bank or cash, you're creating your disposal, it means that you come here and say bank or cash and put your value there. Are we together? Now, for you to know whether it's a profit or loss on disposal, this is what you do. You have to balance off and compare the debit side with the credit side. Now, if the credit side is higher than the debit side, it would mean that when you compare what this vehicle has depreciated plus what you've gotten, if this side is higher, it means we've gotten more value out of our asset. I don't know if you get it. It means that we've gotten more value from our assets and therefore we will have a profit 
on this puzzle right there. Just in case the credit side was higher than the debit side, we'll have our profit on this puzzle here. This would mean that our vehicle, which costs us, let's say, 20 million, when you compare it with the, what it had depreciated and how much we got out of it, how much we got out of it and how much to what that depreciated is higher compared to the value of the vehicle. And that's why we have a profit on disposal. Now, in case our vehicle is of a high value compared to what they are paying us and compared to what it had depreciated, then we'll have a loss on disposal. We'll have a loss on disposal. So that is how you would balance off your disposal account to find out either you have a loss or profit on disposal. Profit is usually on this side. So just for you to uh, give you an indication, I'll give you an example here. If I rub off, if for example, our motor vehicle was maybe 20 million. I'm assuming my vehicle is 20 million. If it had depreciated only 10 million, and uh, I sold this vehicle, for example, for 5 million. Definitely, if this vehicle was bought 20 million and it had depreciated 10 million, this vehicle would be worth 10 million. The difference between the value of the vehicle and the attributed depreciation, the net book value of the vehicle will be 10 million. If I go ahead to sell this asset at 5 million, it is much likely that I've sold it lower than its carrying amount or than its date book value or the current value. So it means definitely that I'll have a loss on disposal because this side has 15 and this side has 20 million. So I'll have a loss on disposal of 5 million. And that's why the loss on disposal will be on that side because I've sold this uh, vehicle at a lower amount. Now, in case this was the scenario, this vehicle is 20 million and it has depreciated at 10 million. And by luck, I get a customer who gives me 15 million. It would mean that even if I bought this vehicle at 20 million and it has depreciated for 10 million, when you get the difference between the value of the vehicle, uh, uh, the, the value you bought at the vehicle, vis-a-vis -vis the accumulated depreciation, it gives you a difference of 10 million. So the 10 million, when you compare it with how much you've gotten from the person who has paid you the 15 million, it is definitely higher. So what you've received is higher than the carrying amount because the carrying amount, before even I look at this, the carrying amount is the 20 million minus the 10 million. So if I have earned, a profit out of this vehicle, it would mean that I would debit it here. Profit on disposal of 5 million. So that is how, uh, how it will actually appear. So that's how the aspect of profit and loss on disposal comes into play. So it's very important for you to understand how these things work. Okay, so given that, I want us to try out uh, some question. And uh, I'm going to uh, first display this question for you. This question is uh, 
May 2018. I know that uh, we already talked of this May 2018 at some point in time. So allow me share the screen. This seems to be playing me. Okay, right here. So this question, I think we, uh, I went through some part of this question, but uh, this question part A was saying that briefly explain the reasons for the slow growth of entrepreneurship in, of entrepreneurship in Uganda. Okay, so, Uh, we proceed here. They are giving us um, the same quality farm products limited. QFP is an agribusiness company producing quality eggs and horticultural products all year round. The following information was extracted from the farm's asset register as at 1st July. Oh, sorry, this PC has gone off somehow, but it will reconnect again for me to show. So was extracted. Okay. So was extracted from the firm's asset register as at 1st July, 2016. So we have assets here. We have puncher, we have an incubator, we have an irrigation equipment. We also have dates of purchase. We have one that was purchased on 1st July, 2015. We also have one that was purchased at 1st January 2016 and then April 2016 with the respective values there. They have also gone ahead to give us the depreciation rates for each of these assets. They are saying, they are saying the firm kick-started an expansion program in the financial 2016 and 2017 that included the following transaction among others. On 1st December 2016, the company purchased the following assets. So we are seeing additions here. We have an incubator number two to increase the capacity of the hashing chicks. The incubator was to be depreciated at 20% per annum, not very different from the depreciation rate that they have given us earlier on. Then they also got a generator at that at 3.6 that was depreciated at 10 percent per annum remove from the asset register the entire irrigation equipment after it became dysfunctional you get it and then they are saying that the generator purchased on first december 2016 was exchanged for a bigger brand new generator at book value. Like I said, you may buy a new asset, but you can also have situations where you exchange your existing assets with another entity. Then we have 
all assets are depreciated using straight line. And they are giving us this clause. The company charges full year depreciation in the year of purchase and none in the year of disposal. Depreciation expense is assumed to accrue evenly throughout the year. The company's financial year ends 31st December. All payments were made through the bank. Now, friends, this question is asking us to prepare these respective accounts. One, they want us to prepare a single nanny current asset account. It means that we don't have to go ahead to, to draw up an account for incubator, an account for generator, an account for furniture. We basically just need to draw up a single asset, single non current asset account as indicated here. In the same way, they have also told us to draw up the accumulated depreciation account. The accumulated depreciation account and they have also asked us to draw up the disposal of the nanny current asset now this clause of the company charges full years depreciation in the of purchase and non day of disposal is very key like i already indicated because this would mean that these debts we are seeing of first december 2016 and then this one became dysfunctional in 30th June 2017. And the generator was also purchased at 1st December 2016. It would mean that that in any way does not affect our depreciation percentage. We don't have to time a portion like the case that I showed you earlier on. So it's uh, very important for us to understand that. So we are going to uh, do uh, a calculation for this. I'll stop share. And then I, I hope you have this question. In case you don't have the question, I ask you to take a screenshot. Just take a screenshot of this using your, your phone. Just take a screenshot of this. You can even download this on the iSpar website. Yeah, if you're watching a replay of this, you can pause and download the paper so that you have it with you. So I hope you've taken the screenshot for this. These are very easy numbers that you can actually get uh, all the marks. For example, this number had over 15 marks after you've gotten, gotten the five. Of course, you, would, you wouldn't fail to get the five that was asking you about challenges of businesses in Uganda. This should also be marks that you should be able to take home. And that's why passing such a paper if you've done an extensive revision like this one, should it really be a problem? So I'm going to stop sharing and then uh, get back to the board. So the first part of the question is asking us to draw a single nanny card. Now, in, since if they hadn't, I talked about the aspect of single nanny current account, nanny uh, current asset account, you would have to go ahead to draw up a, an asset account for each of them. So that is very important for you to know. But since they have said they want only a single, it means that uh, that helps us, it even guides us more to on what to basically do. Now, let 
This company is called Quality. These headings are very key for you. Quality Farm Products Limited. This is Nani Current Asset Account. Nani current asset account. This is your debit. This is your credit. You can go ahead to, of course, uh, put details, maybe date, detail, and then amount. Your date, detail, and then amounts now since they have given us these amounts with a degree of precision of a thousand you can have a thousand under your amounts just so you don't uh, have to crowd the account with values uh in a thousand now it's very important for you to So it's very important for you to indicate those a thousands because once you don't indicate them and you go ahead to just write figures and uh, you're writing figures, leaving out three zeros, but you've not indicated here, it's much like that the examiner will penalize you because it would mean, if for example, if you write 1,000 here and you're meaning the 1 million and there's no degree of precision here of, of, of three zeros, it would automatically mean that you, 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 you have written 1,000, definitely. So it's very important for you to take that into consideration, okay? So we have different assets that they have given us in the summary that the organization started with. So, From the summary, they are telling us that they have furniture. So you have this date. Uh, because I've said asset register as at 1st July 2016. So 1st July 2016, you have balance brought down. So you have furniture, furniture is 6,500, you have uh, incubator, incubator is uh, 10,000, you also have irrigation equipment. Application equipment, which is eight thousand two hundred. If you have, if you are, if you're following, make sure that you're also writing some of these things as I write, because uh, you may not easily get uh, them. You get it, huh? So that is what we have as at first July twenty sixteen. Now. You can go ahead to uh, balance off the period of 2016, but your question should be, which period are we in here? Uh, they want us to draw up the account for the following ledgers, for the financials 2016 and 2017. Now, of course, before, before we close off, ours should, should be asked us of, was there any additional asset that was bought maybe in the period of 2016? Or was there any disposal 
that was actually made in period of 2016. So you go back to your question. I think I'll, I'll, I'll put my question here. So I don't have to move much. Okay. I not lost my question, just a moment. Okay, so we are saying that uh, the farm quick started an expansion program in 2016 and 2017, and then we have different transactions. Now they're telling us that on 1st December 2016, the company purchased the following assets. So still under the financial of 2016 now, you look at the financial of this organization ends the 31st December 20, uh, 31st December as they, are, they have given us. So if it is 2016, it ends 31st December 2016. Now, we have to, on 1st December, now 1st December, we've not yet closed the year. So it is actually uh, still within the financial year. So 1st December, 1st December 2016, we have an incubator number two. So this is incubator number one. We have an incubator number two. And they are telling us that this was bought at 15 million. So I'll write 15,000. Right there. Okay. At the same time, they are also saying they also bought a generator at how much? At 3.6. So they bought a generator at 3.6. Okay. Remove the asset from the register, entire irrigation equipment after it became dysfunctional in 2017. Generator purchased on 1st December was exchanged. Now the rest of the transaction actually happened in 2017. So I'll go ahead to balance off my, my asset account. So we did have any disposal in 2016. So I'll go ahead to add up six five hundred plus ten thousand plus eight two hundred plus fifteen thousand plus three six hundred. Now, of course, when you're balancing off, this side is higher than the other, so you write forty three three hundred. And then you write balance. Since this side is slower, we shall have a balance carried down of 43, 300. Total it up, you get 43, 300. Yes, 300. I hope so. And then you have a balance brought down. Now this is on 1st January 2017, you have a balance brought down of 43,300, like that. So that is what we, we shall have. Now you go back to compare with your question question 
to see what is next after that. So, in strength 17, they are telling us the first thing. Now, uh, this question also wanted us to draw up an accumulated depreciation account. Now, before I even uh, look at uh, 2017, I want to say that it's good, especially for you, apart from me who has now a small board here, but if you're in an examination, it's good for you to draw up these two accounts. So it's good for you to also draw up your accumulated depreciation account. So that you work on these things concurrently. I hope you, you, you get it. Now, the accumulated depreciation account, which also we call provision for depreciation, we are saying that once we are recording in this account, once we are recording in this account, the last time I said that if it's depreciation, we debit the depreciation account and credit accumulated depreciation. Now, this question did ask for the depreciation account. You, you, you're not supposed to draw it. Even if you draw it, you will not be uh, given any mark for it. Maybe you can draw it for your workings, but you just waste your time. All you need to do is to understand the principle of how accumulated depreciation works. So when you de debit depreciation, you credit your depreciation account. Now, every organization at the end of the financial year, just as we've, we've closed off 2016 here to have a balance brought down in the next financial year, we should depreciate all the assets that are existing in the organization as at 31st December, 2016. Now, they have given us the different depreciation rates as you can see in the starting there. I'm doing these two questions concurrently, though they are different parts. One is part A, another one is part B. But the reason why I'm doing it concurrently like that is because the examiner, before I proceed, Apophia has her hand up. Apophia, you yes, can answer. Yes, I have a question. Please. Um, we are talking about a single non-current asset account. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that, because me, I thought if we have like, um, okay, my concern is that if we have an, a, a, an asset now bought in 2017, can't mm -hmm. can we also include it here in this, in this non-current asset account or you have to first close off one year, then you start another year because I saw we're only focusing on 2016. Okay. I've understood you. I've understood you. Now, as you can see, I after closing off here, I started as balance balance brought down uh, as at uh, first uh, January 2017. So basically, this account is proceeding. You get it. But what I'm trying to present you here, I'm saying that you should draw these two accounts concurrently. Now, if I had another board, I would draw this on another board. You get it. So you should draw these two accounts concurrently. So as I'm doing, as I'm, I'm going to continue, of course, this later on, but I want to say that even before you start on 2017, you should go ahead and depreciate these assets so that you put something into the accumulated depreciation account. Are we together, Apophia? Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. So uh, I beg to proceed. So we are going to depreciate our assets. And uh, when you look at the assets that we had at the start of uh, the year, just a moment. Remember, we need to have any disposals. 
So we had furniture, which was at six six point five, and this furniture was bought at at first Jan July, twenty fifteen, and they are telling us the depreciation rate is five percent. Now, since when you proceed down in the question, they have told us that depreciation is at straight line. It would mean that we are just going to use this percentage, the five percent, and calculate the depreciation. Are we together? So if I want to just use uh, this free part and I'm calculating the, the depreciation for furniture, of course, you have to do a working somewhere. When you do 5% of 65 million, you should be able to give you the depreciation for furniture, which uh, we just try to get here. Five out of a hundred times six point five gives you three to five thousand. Now, when you come to the accumulated depreciation account, this depreciation, as you debit it in the depreciation account, you should credit it in the accumulated depreciation. You get it. So, thirty first December, twenty sixteen. The depreciation furniture. We are getting. Okay, these amounts are also in the thousands. We are getting thirty-two five thousand, like that. Okay, we proceed. The next one is the incubator. Now, the incubator. We have an incubator that was bought on. But even before I go to the incubator, I need to clarify something small. In case we are calculating depreciation using the reducing balance method, wouldn't just do five five percent, five out of one hundred. Sorry, times six five times six point five. Rather. We would, we would get the net book value as at that date, 31st December 2016. So if it was reducing balance method, what I would have done, if this asset was bought uh, 1st July 2015, now the policy told us that we charge full year's depreciation, in the year of disposal, in the year of purchase, sorry, and none in the year of disposal, I would go ahead to charge full year's depreciation in 2015, even if I bought it in media, because the policy tells me so. So I would do the, the first year's depreciation based on the 6.5 million. I will go ahead to calculate the depreciation now in 2016 which is the period that I'm in, but this time I will not depreciate on the 6.5, rather I'll depreciate on the net book value, which will be the 6.5 less the depreciation for 2015. So that is what I'll subject my past 5% on. You get it. So it's uh, very important for us to understand that. So since I uh, already have a uh, depreciation at straight line, my just doing uh, that formula, then I am able to get directly. Now the inch beta is not any different. We have inch beta number one, which whose cost is 10 million at 20%. So for inch beta, Now, you can combine these switch betas since they have uh, the same 
uh, the same depreciation rate. In case they are different, different definitely you go ahead to uh, calculate depreciation for each of them separately. But since they they have uh, the same depreciation, you can actually sum them up and do a single uh, calculation. So the each beta number one is at ten thousand, and each beta number two is at okay ten million, and then each beta number two is at fifteen million. So when you add the two, that is about 25 million. Remember, we are also not considering the time when this each beta was, were, was bought because they are telling us that we charge full years depreciation in the year of purchase and none in the year of disposal. So 20% times the 25 million gives you I think uh, this is 5 million. Yep. So you come here and write your depreciation into beta. You write your 5. your 5 million. I hope I got the right thing. Make sure that you try this out so that you don't, okay, it's 5 million, right. Then we now do the irrigation equipment because it also existed at that point in time. Irrigation equipment was bought on 1st April 2016 and uh, its cost is uh, 8,200, 8.2. It's depreciated at 10%. Now, in the same way, since it's straight line, we shall get just get the percentage. In case it was reducing balance, would have to go ahead and capture the depreciation for the first year. Actually, since this is 2016, uh, for this one, it will, it will definitely be the same thing. Since it's the first year, it will just still, still be 10% times uh, the, uh, the cost. So 10%, the depreciation of the irrigation, the irrigation is at uh, 8.2, 8,200. Okay, when you do 10%, it gives you 820, uh, basically 800, 820 shillings. Okay. The other that we also have is the generator. The generator was also bought at a very similar time, like the incubator. So in the depreciation for the generator, they have also given us, they are telling us the depreciation is at 10%. So you they also definitely have your 360. Yes, basically 360, the depreciation for that year. So basically, now we don't have anything for uh, the other account they wanted us the disposal of nanny current assets, but for 2016, we don't have any. So that one, you, you, you will affect it when you start your 2017. So this is how you, actually the position will look like for 2016. You can balance it off and then have a balance carried down here and then uh, have your balance brought down on the, on the other one. Are we together? So it's uh, very important for us to know that. Apofia, your hand is still up. Is everything okay? Okay, I beg to proceed. So like the way I said, since they wanted a single account, I just did this to demonstrate to you how the accumulated depreciation would work. If we are to add this, maybe uh, let's just add it before I move away from here. Uh, this is uh, 3,000. 
three to fifty. I hope so. Plus uh, five thousand plus eight twenty plus three sixty. This is about your balance carried down is about nine four thirty. If I've done the the right the right value. So this 9430 will be your beginning for, uh, for 2017. Same account, I'm not changing the accounts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rub off this portion of, of 2016, but you don't change the account, you just continue within the same account. So this was that detail. So our balance brought down here. I just let me just move this balance up so I'm able to impact uh, my balance. Okay, this is at first, first uh, January 2017. This is balance brought down. I've, 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 uh, this value was 43. I think something like that. I hope so. Okay. 43, 300. Like that. Okay, so we proceed uh, to the next uh, part of 2017. Now, what happened in 2017? They are telling us removed from the asset register the entire irrigation equipment after it became dysfunctional on 30th June 2017. Now, this uh, is another kind of disposal as well. Instead of selling it off, because it became dysfunctional, we just wrote it off. Maybe we scrapped it off at zero. So it's the same thing of telling you that this was scrapped off at zero. So basically, every time we have such scenarios, like I said, we, the first thing is to, since they are saying that we disposed of this, okay, we wrote it off. We go ahead to credit the asset account. We dispose of. So at that date, uh, 30th June, 30th June, 2017, dispose of this asset of uh, the value is. They are saying the one that we bought on 1st December. Now, in the asset account, we must write off this asset at cost. We don't have to calculate the depreciation uh, at this level when we're in the asset account. We should write it off at cost. So we see we bought it at 3.6. So even disposing it off here, we dispose it off at 3.6. The 3600. And why we also do this is because in this account, part of this 43300 is that 3.6. So the reason why we credit the 3.6 is because we want to remove it from this value. You get it. So it's very important for you to conceptualize that just a moment uh my laptop has blacked out i just try to put it into a power cable and then we proceed
So that is how we would dispose of that asset. We, we just put the disposal 3.6. Now, as we remove it here, you can pass it. Okay, you, you pass it through the disposal account as well. Reason why you pass the disposal account as well is because at the end of the day, this asset has also been depreciating. So there is a component of its accumulated depreciation in this account. So you shouldn't only remove it from here, but you should also remove it from this account. So as you dispose of, definitely, of course, this one, when you balance off here, it will balance off with uh, 9430. The same thing here, 9430. So your balance brought down will be 9430. I think I can uh, just rub this and put the balance brought down. So first, July 2017, my balance brought down will be 9430 in the accumulated depreciation account. I don't also open up a new account. I'm just trying to proceed down. So you make that assumption. So if I'm disposing of this asset, I'm like the way they're saying we are removing it from the asset register. It's also another form of disposal. We are saying that we should also write off its accumulated depreciation from the accumulated depreciation account. So that same time, 30th, June, 2017. Now, every time we are writing off the accumulated depreciation, we should debit it because accumulated depreciation has a normal credit balance. So that's why we debit it here. So that will reduce because at the end of the day, the depreciation is also part of this 9430. So we debit it so we can remove it. Okay, so this is uh, the generator. Its accumulated depreciation was 360. So we want to make sure that we are rating off this asset fully because if you had not removed it from accumulated depreciation, you will continue with the value of accumulated depreciation in your books that relates to an asset that you actually did away with. So it's very important that you remove it from this account as well. Okay, so we proceed to the next uh, part, which is saying that uh, okay. Ah, sorry. Uh, they remove the irrigation equipment, not the generator. Forgive me of that. I think I missed it. So we are disposing of the irrigation equipment, which is eight, 200, 8,200. And then its respective depreciation, uh, this irrigation was at 8%. This is 8, 820. I don't know why I took, I thought it was the generator. So this is the irrigation equipment. The generator has another narration on it, sorry. Uh, for the generator, they are saying, and one of the things also with its generator, uh, actually, before the generator, this irrigation equipment was bought in 2016, and uh, we are disposing of it at uh, 30th June 2017. Now, since the policy says that uh, dep we charge depreciation full in the year of purchase and none, and none in the year of disposal, that is why ideally we will not have uh, will not have depreciation in the in 2017. So that's very important for us. So they are saying the generator purchased on first December 2016 
was exchanged for a big brand new generator at book value. The firm topped up 5.2 to acquire the bigger generator on 31st 2017, 31st June 2017. Now, here you need to, uh, it's very important, I think, for us to understand this much better. Allow me, uh, I'm going to create a disposal account on this cupboard. Make sure that you have you have a better you have a better drawing in your in your book. So I'm going to have my disposal account so that I can show you how these things interplay. You get it. It's very important for you to understand. Now, I'll start with uh, what we just disposed of. This was an irrigation system. We say that we credit our disposal. We we credit our asset account and debit our disposal. So, 30th June 2017, I'll have my uh, irrigation equipment of 8200. 8200. These figures are in a thousand. This is a debit, this is a credit. So I've removed it here and put it here in the disposal account. The same thing with also happened with my accumulated depreciation. As I debit here, I come and credit here, still on the same date, 30th June 2017, accumulated depreciation for the irrigation equipment, it is 820. Now, the reason why I do these accounts for currently is because one of the things is because I want to manage time. Because you cannot finish one thing and again come back and again have to rethink about the same thing. That's why I want, if I, if I do something on, one, on one, uh, one, one account, I should be able to replicate it into the other account. That's why it's good for you to draw this. And make sure that when you draw in them, you leave enough space so that you, 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 you're not caught up like me that you have to again move to another page and draw up another account. So you have to make sure at least maybe each of these, especially the asset account, maybe you give it like a full page. No one will, will criminalize you for leaving uh, space at the end of the day when you can ask for more answer sheets. So it's uh, very important for you to know that. So we want to see how to play with the generator here. So they are telling us the data purchased on 1st December 2016 was exchanged for a brand, a bigger brand new generator at book value. Now, no matter what value uh, we exchange this generator on, the fact that we are disposing it off, we should come to this account at which date we disposed of at still at 30th June. We will come here still at the same date and call it a disposal of the generator. We shall dispose of that generator at cost in the asset account. Everything in the asset account here will be at cost. So since the generator was 3.6, so we shall credit by 3.6 and move to our debit here and put generator three point six. You get it. Now, in the same way, this generator also had an accumulated depreciation. Now, the policy says that we we depreciate full depreciation in the year of purchase and none in the year of disposal. So we shall, since we bought it in 2016, we only have depreciation up to 31st December 2016. So we shall not consider depreciation for 2017 because the policy says we should have none depreciation in the year of 
in there of uh, disposal. Fina, your hand is up before I proceed, please. Unmute and ask the question. Uh, Mr. Swamwaya, my issue is the question. I don't know what question we are looking at, which here I'm failing to follow because I came in late. We are looking at uh, 2018 May. Uh, we used this paper in the last in the last uh, in the la in, in the last uh, class, I think. So in case you are downloading this at first, you should be able to get it. It can help okay. you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, uh, Ramadan? Yes, Samuel. My oh, issue oh. is my issue is that uh, that account of accumulated depreciation. Mm. How did you come up with this total of um, nine four thirty? Yet we are working in thousands here, and the first figure of of uh, furniture is three to five. So I'm seeing myself getting a different total here on accumulated uh, depreciation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Just, uh, uh, we can try to add this in the accumulated depreciation. I think I, I must have taken 3250 uh, instead of what? So uh, for, for furniture, uh, just repeat the furniture, the value we got. For furniture, 5% of 6,500, what do you get? Uh, the depreciation of furniture is 3 to 5,000. 3 to? 5,000. No. You know why? The depreciation rate is 5%. So 5% 5 of 65200 when I'm when I'm trying to cap uh, to 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 uh, uh, put a degree of precision of 1000 just multiply 0 0.05 times 6500 gives us 325. Are we together? Just confirm that we are together with that one. So for fun, it is 325. The next one was incubator, which is 20%. Incubator is 20%, 0 0.2 times 10 million plus 15 million of each beta two gives you 25 million. So I'll do 25,000 since I'm working in a thousand, which is, uh, I think I get 5,000. And then uh, the last one was irrigation equipment. Okay, second last, which is 820. And then uh, I also had, uh, uh, a generator of 3.6 that was also bought in 2016. 3,600. Okay. So this is 325 plus 5,000 plus 820 plus 3,600. Oh my goodness. Just a moment. <laughs> Ramadan, are we together? Yes, we are. So when you add, what do you get? How about uh, this 10% of the generator? The 10% of the generator is uh, you 360. Yes. So we have 325 plus 5,000 plus 820 plus 360. Do you have 6505? 
Yes, that's what I have. Is that what you have? Yes, that's what I have. That's what you have. Eh? This is 820, 360. So it gives you, it's okay, we can, we can use that. 6505, you get it, eh? They, uh, since we are doing this online, uh, that those values may not, uh, uh, may sometimes make, make an error, but I believe you can get the principle. So it's okay, we can proceed. You can capture them using your calculator and get uh, a very proper value. So I was saying that since we are disposing of this generator, we write it off here at cost 3600, transfer this amount to the disposal account, but also come and write off the respective depreciation for this generator. This de generator had depreciated only a single year, which is 360. So our generator depreciated three sixty. So you write it here. Now, as you write this amount in the accumulated depreciation account, you should come and credit your disposal account because as you write it off in the accumulated depreciation account, it should be replicated into the disposal account as a credit. So everything from the asset account, from the accumulated account, all goes to the disposal account. So accumulated depreciation for our generator, the 360. You get it. And then, uh, let's just see. So what else, uh, let's, let's just see what, what exactly happened here. Now, uh, before I can proceed, uh, I think there's, there's something, uh, I think why we were getting a difference, maybe just to clarify. Uh, do we see furniture? When you look at our depreciation account here, what we've just added, for furniture, furniture was bought in a different year. So uh, for furniture, accumulated depreciation should be the 325 for year one for the 2015 and the, the depreciation for 2016 of 325. So it's important that you note that uh, in, so it will uh, somehow affect your accumulated depreciation value here that you're starting with. I think we have that's what we had missed. So you can try to update, just add the three to five, the one that was starting for uh for 2015. For the rest of the years, we didn't have any any starting value. So we have six eight three zero. I hope you you, you all know where, where I've gotten that before we can even proceed. So uh, after we've removed the irrigation equipment, we have also uh, removed our generator. Now the generator still has some information on it. They are saying that the generator was exchanged for a big brand new generator at book value. The firm topped up 5.2 to acquire a bigger generator. Now, your question should be, what was the book value of the generator that we disposed of? Now, the book value of this generator was the six, it was 
we bought it at 3.6. When you less the depreciation for this generator, which was uh, uh, just one, one, one year, 360,000. Uh, let's, let's try to get this is 3.6. Minus 360 gives you 324. Okay, 3 million 240,000. That is the book value of the generator at the point in time when we are disposing it off. So they are telling us that the farm topped up 5.2 to acquire this generator. So our new generator basically, the its value is this book value that we exchange the other one at plus the top up of 5.2. I hope you, you, you get that. It is the book value of the other asset plus the top up that will give you the value of the new generator. Now, in your asset account, since we are still in 2017, when that happened, you also have to recognize this asset. So you have on first. Uh, Okay, we bought this just a moment. This was also this also happened on 30th June. That, that's when we are disposing of. So we are going now to recognize the new asset, the new generator. So 30th June 2017, we have the new generator. We have uh now, the new generator, we have, uh, we have two components. We have the exchange and then the top up. So here you write uh, the exchange was 324, 3 million. It was uh, just a moment. 3 million 240. So this is 3,240. Since these are in thousands. And then we have the top up of 5.2. Now, as you write this exchange, remember you transfer this generator into what? Into your disposal account. So as you write here an exchange, you should effect it also in your disposal account. Remember, this time we're not going to receive money for this generator, but we are rather exchanging it. So you should come here on the credit side. Because even when we saw in the, in the earlier, uh, when I was trying to take you through uh, how to recognize uh, in case we had, even if we had sold it for bank, we'd still credit it here in our disposal account. Since this time we've got an, an exchange, would also come and write it here, still the same date, and say exchange for new generator. We shall put the three two hundred and forty like that. So uh, that's how the double entry is completed. Debited here, credited there. Now this top up, of course, as we are debiting it here, in case you, your your cash and, and bank account was here. You, you would go ahead to credit your cash and bank. But since we don't have that, our concern, that does not concern us very much. So we've already affected this account and this account. The 5.2 has actually been input there. Uh, let me see what else happened here. Okay.
the question is also saying that all assets are depreciated using straight line. So ours is now to look at, to look through and see if we've captured everything. So in our disposal, we have the 8200. Okay, we've, uh, we've done that. Now, after you've done this, you've put everything in the disposal account, as well as uh, you balance off your accounts, because this is 2017. So we should go ahead to balance off our respective accounts. Now, for irrigation, we saw that there was no, there was, there was basically, uh, we didn't get any, any, is it for the irrigation that we just wrote off? Yes, there was basically zero exchange for it. So that's why we don't have anything to recognize that. So you balance off this account to get either a profit or loss or disposal. This you balance off to get uh, what will be your balance uh, brought down for the next period, maybe first uh, uh, as at 31st December 2017. The same thing also, your accumulated. Now, before you even close off your accumulated depreciation, you should depreciate for 2017. So as at 31st, December 2017, we are going to depreciate the existing assets. Now, when you look at the question, yours should be which assets are still existing as at 31st December. Furniture has not yet been sold. So furniture, we depreciated it. We had a balance brought down of its accumulated depreciation from 2015. We depreciated it for 2016. Now we are going to ahead to depreciate it. But since the, uh, the depreciation is at straight line, 5% of 6,500, we got, I think, 325. So we shall have new furniture depreciation for this year, 325. We move incubator. The incubators are also still existing. I think we've not disposed of. The incubator of 10,000, and the inch better of 15, okay, 10 million and 15 million. When you do depreciation for these two, uh, we look at, uh, just a moment, depreciation for these two, 10 million plus 15 million times the 20%. Then it gives you 5,000. I think we got 5,000 in the first case, so it's, it's uh, 5,000. So each beta is 5,000. Here we are on 2017. Irrigation equipment is no longer existing. Now, even if we sold this general uh, irrigation equipment in 2017, the policy says that we shouldn't depreciate assets in the year of disposal. So the last depreciation should be the year, pre the year that is following the year of disposal. Uh, which, uh, which, so which we, we already depreciated it for 2016, so we should have depreciated for this year when we disposed it off. So the irrigation is not existing. Now the generator, the 3.6 generator was disposed off. The generator we now have is the generator of the 3 million 240, 3 million 240 plus the 5200, which is 84400. That is the depreciation we have. Now, this depreciation, when you multiply it by Depreciation for the, uh, for the generator is at ten percent. You get eight four four. Okay, so depreciation for generator 
is at 844, like that. Do we have any other assets? We don't have any other assets at that period. So given that you can go ahead to balance off your respective accounts and you have your balances as at the end of 2017. So uh, do we have any questions? Uh, we already out of time. Do we have any questions? If you have any question, you can uh, please unmute and uh, ask. And then I'll, I'll just try to uh, explain. Fina, you have a question, please uh, unmute. Uh, so somewhere, I didn't yeah. get the part of uh, the generator where we have uh, the top up and then the exchange. If you could redo it a little bit, it would be better for me. Okay. So uh, the aspect of the generator is, uh, is on part three. Now, we have a generator worth 3.6 that is existing in our books. Now, this generator has depreciated by 360,000 because it depreciates at 10%, I hope so. Now, after it has depreciated, uh, let's just do it systematically, 3.6 minus 360 gives you 324, yes, 3,240,000. So the question is saying that the generator purchased at 1st December 2016 was exchanged for a bigger brand new generator at book value. Now the book value of this asset is at 3,240,000 when you less its respective depreciation of 360. So if it was this exchange for a bigger brand new generator at book value, it means that this is the worth that we got from this generator in exchange for a better generator. And that's why I'm saying that in the disposal account, you should recognize the 3240 as the consideration for this generator that we are disposing of. And then as we dispose of this generator, we are getting a new brand generator, which is at how much? At 5.2 as a top up. So the new generator, if you want to get the value of the new generator, it is a 3.240 plus the 5.2 top up. When you add these two together, you get your eight, I think 844. So 8 million, 800. So this will be the value of your new generator. And of course, you come and here, you, you come and put the two values. These two values add to 8 million. So this will be posted in your non-current asset account because you have a new generator. Just as you've written off this generator of 3.6, you have a new generator of what? 8.44 that you put in this account. So as that generator has come into place, it has come into place even before the end of the financial year. That's why we went ahead to also depreciate it and include its depreciation in the depreciation account. So uh, is that clear, Fina? Fina, is that clear? Yes, it is. It's clear now. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, there was another person who had put up their hand, but I think they left. Any other? Okay. We don't have any other question right now. So I would encourage you to try out uh, uh, a question. The question of... Um, August 2019, even yes, I think last class I also gave an assignment, but I didn't see anyone share their solution. So try out the paper of August 2019. It has uh, 
a question on depreciation, you can share your solution. Then I'll, I'll, I'll be able to give you some guidance in case you have any challenge. Uh, it is question four. So try out that and then revert on the WhatsApp group. So like you said, uh, we, will, we have our classes uh, every, uh, last time we had it on Sunday. So we've now had one on what? Or today. So I just take note of that. In case there are any changes, then I'll be able to communicate uh, this on the WhatsApp group. So for those days, just create them to make sure that you're part of this class. But also during the week, in case you have any challenge, post it on the WhatsApp group. Maybe you're reading and you're finding a challenge. I'll, I'll be able to give you the support on the WhatsApp group. So you shouldn't wait for, the reason why we have that WhatsApp group is because we want to support you continuously. So you shouldn't wait for this class to share a challenge. So if you're reading and it's something that is confusing you, post it there, then I'll use either an audio note or text to be able to respond and guide you accordingly. So thank you so much till we meet once again. Uh, I wish you the best in your night. Bye bye. Please share on the WhatsApp group how the class has gone. Uh, I would love to hear from you. On, on how you phone the class.